Hello, hello, friends. This is Krista Alicia, and today I wanted to get on here, and I wanted to just share this really powerful prophetic word that the Lord gave me actually over the weekend. I was on a flight headed to Dallas, Texas, um, and was not anticipating having a profound encounter like the one I'm about to share with you, but that's usually the way God does it, you know. Um, he gives you things that are really big when you least expect them a lot of times. And so I'm just going to share with you the encounter that I had and why I felt that the Lord wanted me to re release this word specifically today. Um, I feel that this word is going to be very impactful to you personally and in regards to our nation and where our nation is is headed. Um, I pray that as you receive this word, that you begin to prepare for 2022 um, and ask the Lord what it is exactly that he is calling you to do um, to prepare for a mighty visitation and an outpouring of his presence like we've never encountered next year. So, so on a flight to Dallas on 12 8 21, I went into a vision. In the vision, I saw 70 million unborn children standing as witnesses before the Supreme Court judges. Their voices were crying out for justice in the ears of the judges day and night. I saw two men specifically who I knew were Supreme Court judges, and they were tossing in their beds while they were trying to fall asleep. Um, but the sound of the voices of children saying, let me live, choose life and not death, echoed in their ears and was tormenting them. Then the vision shifted and I saw a witch and she was screaming in an attempt to intimidate the church. I saw as a warrior bride who I knew was the ecclesia or the bride of Christ she rose up with a sledgehammer and shattered the witch's teeth. The witch ran into a house to try to hide. And then I saw a glorious white church house fall on the house that the witch ran into, crushing her much like what happened to the wicked witch in the Wizard of Oz. As I was praying into the interpretation for this vision, um, the vision continued but I began to hear the voice of the Lord speak simultaneously with this panoramic vision. Um, I am going to just give you the word of the Lord rather than the things that I saw. Some of the things that I saw were, um, were quite disturbing, um, but there is so much hope in this word um, that like this is a victory word. So I'm just going to tell you what I heard the Lord say while I was continuing to see this. So I heard the Lord say, I will demolish every word spoken from worldly wisdom. And I will prove the foolishness of those who think that they are so wise that they dare to rival me in their arrogance. My words of truth will be as a hammer to destroy their argu arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of who I am. My house, the glorious ascended remnant church, is going to fall on the houses of government, from the White House to the Senate House to the House of Congress, to the courthouse to the bank house, to the House of Representatives, and those who have been a false representative of righteousness will be dismantled along with their dynasty built on the blood of the innocent." They will be taken by surprise as their wicked platforms are crumbling beneath them even now as they plot and conspire against me and my people. I am scattering their speech even as I did at Babel. I am sending the fear of the Lord and releasing a spirit of confusion into the camp of the enemy. In their fr frustration, they shall turn on each other like ravenous wolves, for indeed they have been as wolves in sheep's clothing, le leading my little ones to the slaughter. But now, says the Lord, the cup of their iniquity is full, and they will drink from the bitter cup in which they have prepared for themselves. 
For even as the bowls of intercession are being poured out as answers to the fervent prayers of my ecclesia, so will I pour out my vengeance against my enemies. Their time has run out. No longer will they harm my lambs. They have said in their hearts, we will buy, sell, and trade the children, for lust is a lucrative market. No one can touch us, for we have built an empire on the blood and bodies of babies, and those who have tried to stop us we have overwhelmed by our own strength, for we know surely God is dead. But I say, woe to those who have turned what was made to be holy and consecrated for my purposes into defiling trading tables managed by murderers. Woe to those who have sold and slaughtered the innocent on the altar of Baal, for I am coming with a whip and a stone, a whip to crack the backbone of their argument and a millstone to hang about their necks and crush their pride to dust. I will cast them into the sea of forgetfulness and blot their names out from the book of life. The monuments they have erected for themselves will be defaced, even as I am removing their face from the honor rolls of history." And not so many years from now, the world will weep when they read of the atrocities of abortion. Watch as I am performing a great overturning in the heads and hearts of your nation. Even the unjust judges are weary of the nagging pleas of my church. In the days ahead, there is coming three red waves, and my people will see each wave bring overwhelming victory and justice to the land. I will do this even with the illegitimate one seated in the White House. I will do this to be a sign that I, the Lord, am the one and the only one who can save a nation. For I will not share my glory, nor will another man be exalted as your Savior. You may think you lost the battle, but watch as we have already won the war. Although the enemy came in like a flood, I, the Lord, have raised a standard against him. Welcome to the year of Jubilee, where the red wave of redemption will come in as a tidal wave of justice and reform. For it is high time, and I have hastened my word to perform it. Tell my people it's time to prepare for the return of the prisoners and the release of the child captives. As they step out to fight, I will not allow them to fail, for the battle belongs to me, and I never lose. So arise and shine for all to see. Hoist the torch of freedom as a beacon once again to the tired, the poor, the hungry, and disenfranchised. Liberty bells are ringing. Can you hear the alarm? Awaken, O sleeper, and rise from your slumber, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night has covered all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you, America. It has been said, as goes America, so goes the world. Yes, watch as they watch, for you carry the legacy of liberty with gospel-preaching pilgrims, pioneers, trailblazers, reformers, war heroes, and freedom fighters from every tribe, nation, and tongue in your veins. The cloud of witnesses is standing this day as a witness to my words over this generation. My angels are even now releasing new assignments, blueprints, and destiny scrolls to those who are willing to violently take hold of my word and run with the enforcement of my kingdom. I am releasing the mantle of George Washington over my remnant now to empower them in this fight. The nations of the world look to you. Yes, all the nations will come to your light and see your radiance. Oh, say can you see, everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home in your arms. The smallest family will become a thousand people and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation. The time is right, and I, the Lord, will make it happen. Go through the gates, clear the way for the people, build up the highway, remove the stones, lift up the star-spangled banner over the nations. My banner over you is love, America. Look now, your salvation is coming. Indeed, I am coming to your aid, and my restitution comes with me. 
beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, praise for heaviness, and a double portion of honor for your shame. I will do this all for the glory of my name, for I am the Lord who shows mercy and compassion to a thousand generations on the descendants of those who love me. The cloud cries out, and I have not forgotten them. Wow. Um, so I, I just felt to share with you the, the significance of the George Washington mantle. Um, George Washington, obviously he was our first president and he was a revolutionary war hero. Uh, he was a citizen soldier. That's what he considered himself was a citizen soldier. And, um, and a civil servant. He was a civil servant. He was actually very humble and he was embarrassed by grandiose titles. He was extremely self-sacrificing. He had impeccable character and was extremely honest. He was brave and fearless in battle and was known to uh, ride out on his horse and um, in between enemy lines and his soldiers in the middle of gunfire and cannon explosions, and he was never once harmed. Um, some prophetic significance, the Lord highlighted the fact that he ha- he rode a white horse named Nelson, and Nelson actually means champion. And a champion is a person who fights for a cause or on behalf of someone else and someone who surpasses a rival with victory. Um, so part of George Washington's mantle is, um, is being a champion for a cause, a defender of a certain, uh, belief or ideology. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that Jesus, uh, in the book of revelation comes riding on a white horse and he's known as one who is faithful and true. And I believe that those that carry a piece of this mantle, are going to be filled with the spirit of Jesus to remain faithful and true in their calling. George Washington also studied his enemies and he created new technologies to spread information quickly to patriots. He fought like an Indian with persistent ambush attacks that eventually wore out his enemies. Although he lost more battles than he won He eventually, his tactics won the war because he just would not quit. He would not give up. He wouldn't sit down and shut up. And he continued to press in and he wore out um, the world superpower at the time, which was the British Empire, through this kind of battle tactic. He was also an entrepreneur and he created new texts technology for harvesting wheat and separating the grain from the chaff. Does that sound like anybody to you? Um, so I believe that the Lord is also releasing a mantle for, um, for people to become like threshing instruments in his hand, according to Isaiah 45. George Washington was the only president to free all of his slaves and provide for them years after his death. And I believe that the greatest atrocity of our generation is uh, child and sex trafficking um, and the trafficking of, uh, of body parts from the unborn. And there are going to be those who are going to be raised up in this hour to, uh, to free those captives and those slaves. George Washington stepped away from power two times, desiring no compensation or recognition, although there were many that wanted him to continue a presidency. He valued the the republic and what it stood for more than he valued recognition or power, and so he stepped down. There are going to be many like that in this hour that rise up. He had the most diverse cabinet than any other president. Now, I believe that this mantle is going to fall on civil servants and uh, people who are going to rise up to become politicians uh, who are not going to 
be career politicians, but they are going to be people who the Lord raises up as civil servants. And I also feel that this is going to be something that is going to rest on the church, that the that the separation between church and state um, is going to be completely demolished. Um, George Washington also had a mantle for unity. He rallied not only the extremely dis- diversified cultures of the colonies, but he also honored women, Africans, um, and Native Americans all under the banner for liberty and justice for all. He was even able to win over his former French enemies and make them allies um, to his cause, therefore giving the Americans sea superiority over the British Navy. He was a praying man, and we know that there is a record that at least one, that George Washington had at least one recorded prophetic encounter, which you can look up, the visions of George Washington. You can Google it or a duck, duck, go it. And George also lived with a future generation in mind, although he had no biological children of his own. And I believe that he actually embodied the spirit of Elijah, who would return the heart of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And um, I believe that that is going to be released on our generation as well. You know, one of the greatest war moves that Washington ever made was actually on Christmas Day when he and a ragtag group of uh, colonist rebels boarded their boats and they set sail to cross the Delaware. That was a strategic battle in the history of the Revolutionary War, and it was actually through that victory and two subsequent others that followed immediately after that was what secured our victory to become a sovereign nation. The Lord began to speak to me about this and said, there is a crossover coming at Christmas. And just as Jesus crossed the threshold from Mary's womb into the world, I believe that the remnant is crossing over and long-awaited prophetic promises are going to be birthed. We have been in a season of travail and under intense pressure. And this is because we have been experiencing the birth pangs of revival and a new Jesus people movement. I truly believe that just as Mary, whose name means bitterness, gave birth to Jesus, whose name means Savior, uh, it is going to be through the bitter season and out of the bitterness that we have experienced in these years of injustice that we are going to give birth to to our victory, that Jesus, the likeness of Jesus is going to come through us in the travail. And we are going to see a mighty wave of salvation and of glory and of revival. And these things are going to, um, I feel that they are going to be released around Christmas. I heard the Lord specifically say to tell his children to not despise humble beginnings for the Lord delights to see the work begin. And I feel that for many of us in this season, we have had these prophetic promises that we have held on to for many years and um, just cultivating them in our hearts and asking the Lord when the time is and, and not feeling ready to release and For many of us, myself included, I mean, like any parent, you want everything to be perfect and done just right when it's so important to you. But, you know, Mary and Joseph, they did not have it all together the night that Jesus was born, okay? It was actually equivalent to every parent's worst case scenario. They were two homeless teenagers having a baby out of wedlock in a barn, in winter, (laughs) you know, many of us would have looked at them like, wow, like they're going to amount to nothing. Like, 
what a hopeless, terrible scenario, right, for a child to be born in. And and I really honestly think that many would have tried to encourage Mary to get an abortion if she had lived during this day and age. Have you ever thought about that? But guys, we cannot abort the promise just because the circumstances do not seem perfect when it's time to release what God has put in us. God was pleased to use the most humble beginnings to be the origin of the birth of his son, who was God in flesh, King of kings and Lord of lords. He was destined to save the whole world through every generation by his blood sacrifice. Humble beginnings birthed from God's heart will eventually create a huge impact for generations to come. If we are willing and faithful to steward them instead of abort them, you know, Tiny acorns grow into mighty oaks. And I truly believe that God made it that way because nature will preach to us through his creation. Mary and Joseph were poor, but with the birth of their baby, supernatural provision came from three wise men with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, and I I believe that, you know, God, look guys, God always provides for himself. There is always provision for his vision. So whatever you are carrying in your spirit that God is calling you to give birth to, know that God will provide for your prophetic promise as soon as you go through with the delivery. So bring that thing out into the open and God will bring the wise men who still seek him alongside of you to help finance and support and serve your mission. It's time for us in this season leading up to Christmas to rest in the Lord seek his face, listen to his instruction, and to give birth to the long-awaited promises that he gave us. And um, I believe that many people that are listening to this video, you are being released right now to do the thing that God has put in your heart to do. Don't wait for the perfect circumstances. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Prepare for the child captives to come home. Prepare your churches to receive the harvest of souls that's coming. Whatever it takes to get ready, do it. Because when everything happens, You're going to be able to catch the thing that God has desired to put in your hands and you're going to be ready to run. Okay. So friends, I just bless you with this. Also, I want to share this, this too. So this is crazy. Um, the Lord has been speaking to me about two, two, two. Okay. In scripture, Multiples of twos uh, actually add up to signs, wonders, and to miracles. It represents intimacy and unity. I'm actually getting this from uh, Tony Brewer's book, Numbers That Preach. It's an amazing book. The Lord told me specifically to look in this book as I was remembering um, and recalling what 222 stands for because I've been seeing it everywhere. Um, Interesting fact Today is December 14th, and 
It is actually the 222-year anniversary of George Washington's passing. Today, December 14th, 2021, is the 222-year anniversary of George Washington's passing, okay? Another interesting fact is that George Washington was born on February 22nd. He was born on 222. Could all of this mean that in February, February 222, 2022, we are going to see an amazing American revival break out? Listen. Two twenty-two, and this is straight from this book, is connected to American revival. It says American revivals tend to be poured out on dates with the number two two two. History shows that on two 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 nineteen oh six, Black evangelist William J. Seymour arrived in the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, and the Azusa Street revival, the greatest move of the Holy Spirit on this side of the world, began. Maybe it's an American thing because 1776, our nation's birthday, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 222, and George Washington's birthday is 222-1732. Boom. There it is again. Here are some other fun prophetic declarations you might claim for yourself if 222 is after you. Now listen, you will be hidden from your enemy according to Joshua 222. There will be waters of healing. I believe there's going to be a great uh, healing evangelist movement that is coming that I pray to God I am a part of, according to 2 Kings 2.22. There will be total separation from your enemies, according to Proverbs 2.22. Total separation from people who hinder you, according to Isaiah 2.22. You will be... Uh, you. Uh, deep and secret things will be revealed to you according to Daniel 2.22. Dreams and vision for guidance according to Matthew 2.22. New wine skin and new or new wine and new wine skins according to Mark 2.22. Finding your place in the body of Christ according to Ephesians 2.22. Great acts of faith according to James 2.22. An incredible stability in God in an unstable wor- world, according to 2 Samuel 22, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. <laughs> wow, guys. It was even in Matthew 2, 22, where Joseph... Jesus' father was warned by God in a dream. I'm telling you guys, this is big. This is big. And um, even as it's it's getting ready to turn to 22 p.m. here as I record this, I pray that this word witnesses with your spirit. I pray that even now, as I was releasing these words, that the mantle of George Washington is being released over you to rise up as civil soldiers in this end time revolution. I pray that God would strengthen you, that he would embolden you. I pray that he would give you directions and guidance, that you would boldly step out and you would prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. Wow, guys, I feel the anointing so heavy on me right now as I just release this over you. Guys, the all of heaven is so 
active right now. And they are intimately involved in what is going on. I would also like to mention that there that 222 is historically a day when um, prophets have been buried. Uh, Bob Jones was buried on 222. Kim Clement was buried on 222. And um, John Paul Jackson was buried on 222. And through these prophets, those three prophets specifically, they released incredible words regarding the nation and the world and the time that we're living in. And I believe also that they are standing as a witness right now to our generation, along with over 70 million uh, unborn children that never had the right to live along with all of the patriots and the pioneers and the forerunners and uh, the gospel crusaders and circuit writers, the tent preachers, the evangelists, the revivalists of past generations. They are standing and they are looking as witnesses over our generation. And friends, I pray that we can make them proud I pray that we don't miss this opportunity in time because we will never get it back. And I pray that Jesus be glorified and that he receive his full reward for the glory of his name and for our Father in heaven. Amen. I love you guys. I bless you guys. Um, If this witnessed with you, please share it with somebody else so that it can be an encouragement to them. And um, I will be back here later uh, when I have more to share. Okay. Until we meet again.